Samsung's new Note 20 Ultra is a beast, and the S Pen is one of the main reasons why I'm going to show you how to use it next. Hands on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? Well, LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether employees are working in the office or remotely. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. Hello everyone and welcome to Hands on Android. I'm Jason Howell and I have right here the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, a beast of a phone. This thing costs just a little bit more than $1,400, if that tells you anything. And it's quite a comparison to the device that I was using prior to this one, which was Google's new Pixel 4a, which is a much different price category, much different build type. The Note 20 Ultra is top of the line. It's premium. It's Samsung's best that doesn't fold. And one of the reasons why is the S Pen right here. The S Pen is a signature feature of the Note series. Uh, and this S Pen is pretty interesting. Now, last year they added Bluetooth connectivity into the S Pen. This year is the same. It has a lithium titanate uh, battery inside with a standby time of 24 hours. Uh, still has 4,096 levels of pressure sensitivity when you're drawing, so you can get really fine lines as well as really thick ones if you push hard enough and you're using the right uh, pen uh, inside of the app that you're using. But the latency has really improved, and you really do notice a difference. They've dropped that latency down from 45 milliseconds down to 9 milliseconds on the Ultra. And what they're trying to do is really replicate the feeling of what it's like when you write with an actual pen on paper or a glass screen. Uh, it is a little bit different, but it does feel much closer to what we're used to. And uh, I thought I'd spend a little bit of time kind of showing you some of the new features uh, for the S Pen in the Note 20 Ultra this year and some of the things that people have come to rely on. Uh, basically, these are some tips and tricks for the Note 20 Ultra's S Pen. Let's take a look. So first of all, we're going to take a look at Memo on the go. This really is one of the best features, in my opinion, of the S Pen. With the screen off, all I have to do is simply pop out the S Pen, and boom, I'm put into writing mode. Even if the screen is black, I can start jotting on it. Scribble, change the pen size, change the color, erase. All those features are in there uh, for this on-the-go mode. One thing that's really cool about this, you might think that you know you need to rest your hand on the display in order to write like you might do on paper, and it does reject your on your hand on the display, so that's excellent, as it should. Uh, go ahead and rest your writing hand on the screen like you would a piece of paper, and you can, you can do that without any issues. Uh, definitely better than fumbling with a note app and typing on a keyboard. Personally, I like it a whole lot better. I, and by the way, if you happen to write a note, and you want to remember it later, you want a constant reminder, you can actually pin it. You hit that pin button, and it'll pin it to your always-on display, the ambient display. Uh, and you can keep that as a constant reminder and, of course, change it up as you have new uh, notes to display there. Very cool stuff. All right, so secondly, there's Samsung Notes, which is similar to Memo on this kind of Memo on the Go feature, uh, but Samsung Notes is more fully developed out, let's say. Uh, this is a Notes app with the S Pen in mind. It is fully usable without, but with it, it's super powerful. Now, uh, a few of my favorite features here, and some of these are new actually. First, if your handwriting is kind of like chicken scratch, like my handwriting obviously is, you might be surprised to see how well the conversion from scribble to text is. It's a feature, it'll, it'll take a look at your handwriting and try to determine what that is in text and convert it over. That way you can easily copy it out in plain text. You could simply convert your scribbles into text right there in the note. And I will say it's not perfect, but it's pretty darn good what it's able to do. Now, when you're writing, um, one thing to know is that notes, the notes app actually records each stroke in order. So you can do really cool things after the fact based on that uh, that aspect of this. For example, when you're writing at an angle, which I tend to do, I kind of write upwards when I'm writing on the note, you can tap and straighten the text and it automatically organizes itself. It uses all of those different strokes and kind of shifts them around to make it straight. And again, this isn't flawless, but it works really well. 
Uh, you can also select in the paperclip option uh, menu up top, you can select to choose an audio recording. This is a new feature that will actually record your audio while you're writing or drawing. And you can play this back later and all of your strokes are timed uh, with the audio. So as you can see, this records everything as I go along, including the voice record. Really neat if you happen to be like in a meeting or something like that. You can you can come up with different use cases for that. Uh, and then finally, the stroke eraser mode actually allows for the removal of a single stroke. Instead of a careful eraser precision, you just tap on the stroke, even if it's overlapping with another stroke, and that stroke will disappear. All right, the next one is, I'd say, uh, one of the marquee features that Samsung likes to point out. It's called Air Actions. I'm kind of iffy on this. I mean, there's, there's some use cases, but I'll show you what it is. These are shortcuts that are powered by the S Pen itself. So, you know, on the side, the side button on the side of the S Pen, you hold that down and then you make a particular movement in the air. And they've added some new shortcuts uh, that can work anywhere on the device so it's not app specific. For example, if you do a left to right action, that mimics the back button. If you do an up to down, that takes you home. If you do a right to left, that takes you to recents. Though what's weird here is that you then have to tap on the screen to cycle through your recents. Um, kind of a missed opportunity. It would be nice to be able to cycle through uh, in the air. Down to up brings up smart select. And this is for grabbing a screenshot of the portion of the screen. So that's nice. And then squiggle. <laughs> If you can get it right, it didn't always work for me perfectly, but squiggle should bring up screen right. Uh, some other ways to use this are app specific. For example, in the camera, you can use the side button to take a picture. You just simply hit the button and it'll take a picture or record video. And this is great for setting up selfies or group shots where you don't want to be holding the camera. You can prop it up, go away, and it's like your remote camera shutter. Very neat. If you do the left or right air action, that actually switches your camera modes. Again, if you're away from the camera, this could be helpful. And if you do a loop-de-loo in either direction, uh, it zooms in or zooms out. So again, these are all really useful when you're away from the camera. Honestly, some of these actions just, and just in general are way more useful than others. And you have to be really careful with the motions in order to get the right one to fire. It definitely takes some practice. I'm still working on it. <laughs> Now, I mentioned ScreenWriter a few minutes ago. This is a great way to take screenshots on the device and annotate them. And, you know, the idea being you take a screenshot, maybe you want to draw some attention to something specifically in the shot. So you've got your drawing tools in order to do that. But one feature that I think is really worth looking at, and it's very easy to miss, is the integrated scroll capture function. You can find it down at the bottom there. And essentially, the app manages the scrolling for you. So if you're on a long web page and you want to take a screenshot of the entire web page, even everything that's outside of a view, you just tap that button and it manages scrolling perfectly for you to make sure that it ends up at the end of the last screen's view so that you have a seamless screenshot of the entire web page. You can go down as, as far as you want. When you look at it later, you're not going to find those seams. It's going to stitch it together perfectly. Uh, there are apps that do this. Samsung just embeds it into the experience. So it's a nice thing to have right out of the box. Now, what if you want an easy way to make a GIF? Or is it GIF? I don't even know anymore. Uh, well, Smart Select is that way. Now, it is a great way to grab a screenshot of a portion of the screen. Uh, so you can do that easily. But once you've got that portion of the screen selected, you can throw it into GIF or GIF mode. And now you can grab a few seconds of let's say a video playing i don't know your favorite twitch show we want to see aunt pruitt <laughs> showing off uh, some hardware on uh, hands-on tech you can draw on the screen the portion of the video player and capture that and uh, like i'm doing right here turn it into an animated gif for uh, social media it allows you to save it out in, into uh, gif format or you can save it out into other media formats but it's a really nice way to just grab an animated gif uh, GIF. I'm just going to keep flip-flopping and make you all angry. The next feature I think is really cool is magnify. Now, this was not in my list by default. I actually had to go into 
the side list and add it. So know to look for it. It's a great accessibility feature. And what it allows for is the ability to hover the S Pen over the screen. So you don't even have to touch the screen with it. If you hover close enough, it's going to give you a magnification box and you can dial in whether you want it to magnify 150% all the way to 300% of magnification. You just hover that pen over the display, a pop-out box shows the contents in there. You can make that box larger and smaller uh, and everything is uh, magnified as specified. Very neat feature, excellent for accessibility. Now translate is another feature here. Now I'm on a web page here uh, that's fully in Spanish. If I want to translate the pieces of this anyways to uh, English, let's say, I can pull out the S Pen and activate translation tool. And you wanna make sure that the languages are set appropriately. There's a number of languages that you can pick from, of course. In this case, I'm translating from Spanish to English. And what I can do is I can hover the S Pen over the word on the page to see its translation. It's just doing the word in this mode right now, uh, which is helpful. But I can also select the text icon up top and that switches it to a paragraph mode. And this way I can have it kind of list out and translate the entire paragraph. And if that's not enough, I can hit the speaker and I can hear word for word that paragraph in its original language. Tomar al menos dos funciones que el año pasado hicieron que su predecesor se quedara por detrás del reloj de Apple, GPS y micrófono con bocina. And finally, there's some fun stuff in there, of course. AR Doodle is one such thing. It allows you to kind of use your camera to capture a face. It's really dependent on a face, and you can draw on it, and those drawings uh, follow along with wherever the face turns and looks and everything like that. It's kind of neat for a few minutes. Uh, another one is live messages. This is a way to create animated messages, essentially, that kind of draw out for you as you write them. And you can play it back, save it out to an animated file, and then you know post it uh, on social media or share it with your friend, that sort of thing. And then finally, pen up. And you know, a lot of people use the Note series for actual like true art. And there's some really talented artists using the Note series to create art. Well, pen up is a social network um, that is integrated into the Samsung device, uh, the Galaxy Note 20 and 20 Ultra, that allows you to kind of participate with that community. There's challenges and you can see other people's art and get inspired and realize, wow, it must take a lot of time to be as good as some of those people are. So as you can see, maybe you understand a little bit what Note fans have loved about the Note series and particularly the S Pen, right? I think one of the best features, in my opinion, of the S Pen is just the ability to pull it out and get to jotting right on the screen, even when the screen is off. That really kind of takes it to another level. So many times I reach for my phone and I want to write, write down a note, I have to open up the app and I have to launch it and tap it in. And I mean, I've gotten used to that, but the note series uh, you know, begs the question, like, why do you have to get used to it? Just jot on the screen, store it on your lock screen on the ambient display, or just have it you know, filter away into a folder along with all of your other notes, convert it into text. I don't know, it's a really powerful feature and one of the differentiating key features of the Note series and the Note 20 Ultra. So if you're in the market for a device that you can show someone and say, hey, this is top of the line Android right here. It really is the Note 20 Ultra. It might even be more phone than you need. It's impressive nonetheless. Uh, send me your questions. If you have a question about Android, how to use it uh, in any particular way, or maybe you have some tips, tricks to share, I'd love to hear from you, hoa at twit.tv. Uh, you can also visit our show page at twit.tv slash hoa. That's where you can link out to all the different podcatchers uh, to subscribe to the podcast, as well as out to YouTube to subscribe there. And we hope that you do. Thanks again to uh, everyone who helps produce this show behind the scenes, particularly John Ashley. Appreciate all the work you do, buddy. And uh, thanks to you for watching and listening. We'll see you next time on Hands on Android. Bye, everybody. Want more Twit? Check out Tech News Weekly, twit.tv slash TNW. Tech News Weekly is a show where Jason Howell and I bring the latest and greatest interviews to you from the people making and breaking the tech news. Twit.tv slash TNW.